At a memorial service on Friday, we said goodbye to our much-loved colleague Paul Lockyer, who died in a chopper accident at Lake Eyre. Also lost were cameraman John Bean, who was farewelled today in Brisbane, and pirate pilot Gary Tysers, who will be given a send-off tomorrow. Part of Paul's contribution in the last decade was to bring stories of rural and outback life to Australians everywhere. And fittingly, his final story for 7.30 was about a journey to remote Australia. It was also about gold and the hopes of one man to discover a fabled El Dorado in the outback. Paul wanted his work to be seen, so here is his last story for 7.30. I've eliminated a lot of uh, area, uh, a lot of country, but uh, it's a terribly big place, I'm afraid. And... Bob Lassiter has made more than 30 trips through Central Australia, trying to find a fabled reef of gold that his father, Harold Lassiter, claimed to have discovered. I need to keep searching. I made my mind up to accept that what my father said was correct. Uh, it's no good looking for something if you're half-hearted about it. Now 87, Bob Lassiter has devoted a big part of his life, attempting to prove his father was right. His wife, Elsie, has been his strongest supporter. You've been out there with Bob yes. yourself. Um, yes. You're convinced the reef is out there? Oh, I think it is, and I mean, I only married into it. Uh, yes. Yes, I can't see that it's not. You're still convinced it's out there somewhere west of Alice Springs? Yes, I think so. Oh, yes. When he was travelling through remote central Australia in the early 1900s, Harold Lassiter claimed to have come across a reef of gold running up to 15 kilometres long. He noticed this uh, rocks as though they had been laid out for road making, picked up a piece and, and broke it and uh, he examined it and could first see uh, fine specks of gold in it. But it was much later, at the height of the Great Depression in 1930, that Harold Lassiter decided to return to his find. He convinced a group of Sydney businessmen that there was a bonanza waiting in the outback and they formed the Central Australian Gold Exploration Company to undertake a search. Harold Lassiter, wearing the hat, suddenly found himself at the centre of a remarkable expedition. This was a family portrait taken in Sydney four years earlier, when Bob was a toddler. He was five when his father left for the outback. I can remember uh, writing a letter to him. I asked him to bring me back an emu, and I had ideas of... Uh, riding the emu around the paddocks of Ramsgate. <laughs> the expedition headed out from Alice Springs through some of the most desolate and unforgiving country in the continent towards Western Australia. It made big news. Gold fever, which had swept across Australia often enough since the 1850s, was again taking hold. No expense was spared on the expedition but there were many problems. The trucks broke down and the supply plane crashed, but still the party pressed on. So this is one of the camps, was it one of the early camps here? That was here? the main base camp, yes. Everything went from there, made a trip out here to Mount Marjorie and back to there. But the expedition leader, Fred Blakely, began to doubt that Lassiter had ever been to Central Australia or that a reef of gold existed. My father had definite ideas about where he wanted to, to go and uh, the leader had other ideas and uh, it uh, led to arguments and yeah, I'm afraid that's, uh, that, that was the downfall of the expedition. Amid much dispute and acrimony, the mission was abandoned. Lassiter was left to carry on into the desert with just one man and five camels. But as they trekked to the far west of the Northern Territory, Lassiter's last companion lost faith too and pulled out. Lassiter went on alone. And uh, so some people saying that uh, he created the, the whole thing uh, just to uh, create work for himself. Lassiter's search was to end in tragedy. 
His last two camels fled, carrying off most of his supplies. He sought protection in a cave from the searing heat, documenting his last days in a diary he buried there. A Northern Territory stockman, Bob Buck, was sent out in search of Lassiter, finding his body and the diary, which detailed his harrowing end, starving to death. And in his diary at the end, it's, it's heartbreaking. It says, you know, I can't understand why nobody's turned up. And yet, you know, he was made to be a rat bag. In his diary, Harold Lassiter claimed to have rediscovered the reef of gold and to have pegged it out again just across the Northern Territory border inside Western Australia. It rekindled interest, prompting the Australian Gold Exploration Company to launch another big expedition. Again, it ended fruitlessly, fueling further criticism of Lassiter, which rebounded heavily on the family. The negativity increased after that. Uh, that, that was sort of very early in the the negative stage, yes. But uh, as the years went on, it uh, gradually got more so. How tough was it for, uh, for Bob living with those negative stories about his father? Oh, well, I think it was very hard because he's not a vindictive type of angry person and some of the stuff was vitriolic. And you've retraced uh, most of your father's steps in this area? Yes. Yeah, most of it. Several times I found what I thought were landmarks, but I couldn't get them to tie up with uh, one another. Bob Lassiter plans to resume his search for the fabled Bonanza soon, embarking on another chapter in one of the greatest outback mysteries. He won't rest until he clears his father's name. I think if I can keep it up long enough, you know, I must find it. This is something that's really sort of uh, had a cloud hanging over it. So mm. it would be nice. I'd get some satisfaction out of uh, knowing that the, the people that have been coming out with all these stories, you know, they were wrong. The late Paul Lockyer, he, John and Gary will all be missed.